So all of the interfaces have the ability to be synced because I've connected all of the, uh, the connectors with one another. The second thing you have to do to sync them is to make sure that all of them are running on the same sample rate and the clock source has been uh, properly configured. So in my Yamaha Steinberg USB driver, this is where I select my sample rate and then my clock source, and because it's my main one, I use it as a internal clock source. For my Sapphire Pro 40, right here, I can select the sample rate. I'm gonna keep it the same as my master interface, and I'm gonna have my sync source for sure not on internal. I can't connect the SPDIF to my main, um, to my main uh, interface. So I'm going to select ADAT, and this has worked for me in the past, so that's what I use here. <clears throat> and then for my Profire 2626, when it's in standalone mode, it doesn't matter what it is because that means in standalone you're just using the Profire uh, as its own, but I'm using it as a host or as a slave device. So I have to select which sync source I'm using. And for this, I'm using word clock. And then uh, then basically everything is all hunky-dory. It, ar it already recognizes that my Steinberg is using 44.1. If I were to change this to a different one, it's going to follow this. With my Sapphire, if it doesn't follow, which I'm pretty sure it does, uh, I can switch it manually. But we're not done yet. So now we have to configure each one of these software devices um, accordingly. So we're going to go first into the main and master interface uh, program and we're going to go into the settings panel and for the ADAT optical A and B I can select whether they're ADAT or um, SPDIF. So SPDIF only gives me two channels I want the ADAT because he gives me eight. And for each one of these channels here, or sorry, each one of these uh, ADAT outputs, I can select where the source is going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from, and that source is going to get sent to the ADAT outs. So accordingly, uh, ADAT A out one and two, I'm going to select DAW out one and two. and I'm just going to keep doing that um, accordingly. Now for B out 1 and 2, I just continue that. So 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. So 8 at A gives me one bank of 8 and 8 at B gives me the last 8 bank of 8 channels. Now my monitors, these are going to be under my mix 1 left and right. That's what I use uh, as my main source and I use that in Cubase and I use that kind of strategically um, but all three of these different mixes here mix 2, mix 3 and mix 4 I don't actually have to use those within Cubase for anything and therefore these are extra outputs or line outputs that I can use for um, sending them into a mixer so that gives me my 8 channels here 16 in, cha in total here plus uh, another uh, another six line outputs. So that's a total of 22 outputs. So this one is set up. And for each one of these mix uh, mixes here, each one of these mixes, I can tell it where uh, the headphone the, the headphone jacks is going to get its source and I have it on mix one because this is the main source that comes out of my monitors and that's what I want to hear in my headphones and I want that from for each of the headphone jacks now I also want to mute all of these channels here because I don't want to hear any direct monitoring and I don't want to hear any of the ADAT outputs so that's all going to be muted here and that's under mix one under mix two Likewise, I want everything muted because nothing should be monitored in any way. I think I've had trouble with that before, so that's why I have all of these muted. 
So that is the Steinberg software. We're going to put that aside because we still have to use this for our uh, demonstration. So in my Sapphire mix control, I have to tell it where my inputs are coming from and then where I want those inputs to go to my outputs. Like, because I'm using my line outputs, these here, I'm using these as my audio output source and I have to tell it where those audio sources are coming from. So if we go back into our panel here, I'm saying I want DAW output 1 and 2 to go to my ADAT A output 1 and 2. That gets sent from my Steinberg on the output, gets plugged into my optical input. That means that I now have optical input 1 and 2. And I'm telling input 1 and 2, the uh, optical ADAT input 1 and 2, to go to my output 1 and output 2, which is these two. So, within the DAW, within Cubase, I can tell it to go to DAW 1 and 2. That's just what it's called. And from that, that means it's going through the ADAT into the pro, uh, the Sapphire, uh, and then back th out through these guys here. Now I have to do that from 1 through 8, and that's what I've done here, and I've already configured that here. Now, in the Profire 2626, <clears throat> if we go into the router section, I have to turn the uh, optical uh, optical in port A on. This has to be activated because that's the one that I'm using. And I've just reordered these so that optical A is my primary input channel. Um, and then when I'm here in my analog output, this is like, it's telling me what is, um, these are my line outputs, 1 through 8. And I, I'm selecting what is going to be the source. So likewise, I'm telling it ADAT port A input 1 and 2 is going to go out of these uh, line outputs 1 and 2. And because I'm plugging the DAW 9 and 10 and I'm sending it out ADAT B out as ADAT B 1 and 2, those get plugged into my optical input A. That gets uh, selected as a source as ADAT port A input 1 and 2 and it's going it's being sent out through analog uh, 1 and 2. So I hope that's not too uh, wordy and whatnot. Just watch it a few times if you have to. Hopefully that'll um, that'll do the trick. So we're still not done yet. <laughs> because I want to use my uh, interface button right here. I want this volume button to control my speakers. My speakers are hooked up to mix one. I'm going to select this here. This button means that my my uh, volume knob is controlling the output of that. I do not want that volume knob to control the output of my line outputs, my six extra line outputs here. So if I uh, deselect this button, that means that these are now um, line outputs, I can control them independently of the the volume knob and I want to put them at 0 dB because that'll make them line outputs. I also want to do that in my uh, Sapphire uh, mix control. If they're blue in this square here, these are the outputs. If they're blue, that means that they're controlled by the uh, the volume. If they're red, that means that they're deactivated. And if you select shift and click on them when they're gray like this, that means that they are zero line level outputs, just like this here. They're zero dB line levels. So that's cool there. That means that now they're not being controlled by any kind of volume. They're just going to be running straight through as line outputs. And on the, oops, 
here we go, on the Profire 2424, I want to do the same in this section here, in the settings. The master volume knob, which is, it doesn't, I don't have a picture of that, but the master volume knob, you tell it which of the analog outputs you want to be controlled by the volume knob, and I don't want any of those. I want them to run straight through the audio device as line level outputs. So that's that. There's one last syncing thing to be <laughs> to be done, is you want to have the exact same sample rate, uh, and sample rate is the buffer size here that I'm talking about. I normally use about a thousand samples. That gives me plenty of processing power and buffer uh, a plenty plenty big buffer size so that none of my computer stuff goes crazy um, that gives me all the processing power that I need you have to then select on each of these in the settings part of this mix control you select as your buffer size select the same one and in here and when you're in settings the buffer size the exact same one this is going to sync all of them at the same buffer size. So, yeah, boom. I think I've covered all the syncing. Lastly, we're going to have to cover how to configure everything in Cubase.